What's going on YouTube world? My name is Austin Zabak and in this video I just want to explain to you a little bit about how I became one of the youngest millionaires in the state of Arizona. I'm 23 years old and you know a lot of people have been asking me over the last year, Austin how did you do what you did? Uh, where did you come from? What did your, you know, what did your youth look like? Like how did you grow up? And how did you get to where it is that you are today? And hopefully by the end of this video, if you watch it in full, you'll understand exactly how I was able to do it and the fact that I actually came from a very humble beginning. And my goal and my purpose of making this video is for you to understand that you can actually do exactly what it is that I did, even if it's in a different industry or a different niche. So I'll keep it short, I'll try to keep it super simple, and I want you guys to truly enjoy this video and uh, watch it until the very end. So uh, really quick guys, you know, I'm 23 years old. I was born and raised uh, in Gilbert, Arizona. Okay, now I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I've lived here. My my whole life. Um, when I was about seven years old, I actually moved into my grandparents' garage. Okay, it was one of those stories, obviously, where um, you know it's a very untraditional setting in terms of not living with my parents, and uh, you know it was very chaotic as I was a kid. So I moved into my grandparents' garage, and in, in no way, shape, or form was it like super hot or anything. It was actually really nice. I uh, built like a, a cool like wall in the garage in the, in the single family part, and I put an air conditioner in the wall, and um, you know I had like a little one of those little wall air conditioning units and. It was actually pretty cool, right? Like my friends would always come over and uh, it, it was a pretty cool vibe. It was a cool setting. So, you know, but that said, um, my grandparents didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up. My grandpa actually owned a pool company at the time, but you know, several years prior to that, they had actually had some financial problems. So uh, my grandpa actually taught me at a very young age, I would say like seven or eight years old, how to go clean pools, right? How to clean the pools, uh, put the chemicals, check the chemicals and repair the equipment on the pool, okay? Um, you know, I was always a little bit ahead of my age growing up, and I saw that my grandparents were extremely hard workers, and I really looked up to them and admired them uh, when I was a kid, and I still do to this day. They're the most amazing people on the planet, right? So for me, um, you know, I wanted to be just like my grandpa when I was a kid. So, you know, naturally, when I got out of school every day, he would show me how to clean the pools and check the chemicals and everything like that. And in the beginning, he paid me like a dollar per pool. I would go with him and he'd be like, okay, Austin, you're gonna go check the chemicals and you're gonna net the top of the pool and sweep the bottom of the pool, right? And I'm gonna pay you a dollar per pool. And, and that added up, obviously, because, you know, we were doing maybe like 75 to 100 pool accounts per week. So it was like 75 to $100 per week. And I'm like nine years old at the time. So I was super young and, uh, you know, I was was able to take that money and to go like experience things right I, I was you know having a lot of fun buying RC cars and RC airplanes and stuff like that um, I, I was never really taught like how to save my money as a kid um, but you know I just had this money and I was able to have fun and I was able to you know help my grandparents a little bit with like electricity and you know buy my own stuff right and so Fast forward several years, um, I had that. I actually started my own pool company at like eight or nine years old, and I pulled a trailer from Harbor Freight that I went to Harbor Freight and I bought this like little trailer, uh, and I actually pulled that trailer behind a quad. I uh, welded a hitch. Me and my grandpa. My grandpa helped me obviously weld a hitch onto the back of my quad, and uh, you know I had like a one an inch and seven eighths ball. If you're watching it, you know, and um, I, I pulled this trailer around my neighborhood and, and actually got my own pool accounts by like nine or ten years old. And I was making really good money, obviously, for that age. Um, and it was all cash, right? So it allowed me to have a lot of fun and to buy my own things, right? I was able to buy my own Xbox, my own PlayStation, uh, Call of Duty when the new Call of Duty came out. And, uh, you know, I lived in the garage, so it was, it was a super, like, loose setting. My, my grand, like, there wasn't a lot of rules. Uh, so, you know, me and my friends would always have a good time. And, and fast forward to I was, like, 15 years old. I did that from basically, like, 8 or 9 years old to, like, 15. So, like, 7 years. Uh, when I was 15 years old, the market obviously started to crash, right? I'm 23 now, so we're talking maybe like eight or nine years ago, and that's when the market was basically uh, crashing. You know, it might have even been when I was like 14, right? A little bit younger, but I don't remember exactly, so don't quote me, but it was like around that time frame. Um, when the market started to crash, and obviously people like decided that they would clean their own pool, right? They, they didn't need to pay $100 per month um, for me to clean their pool. So, you know, the, the market's crashing and um, I lost a lot of accounts and I made a decision when I was 15 years old to basically sell my pool company and I didn't make a lot of money, right? I think I profited maybe like $5,000 from my pool company at 15 years old. And so, you know, I ended up selling my company and um, I had to go get a normal job because now I was getting to the age where, you know, I had to buy my own stuff and, and provide for myself. You know, I was, I, the way that my grandparents raised me was that, um, you know, I had to provide for myself, right? And uh, that taught me so many things in life, right? I learned that, like, you have to take accountability for your own actions and you have to be smart and, like, manage your money. And I learned a lot of those valuable lessons at a super young age. Now, obviously, I made a lot of mistakes too. Like, I blew a lot of money on things that I probably shouldn't have. And, uh, you know, there was definitely a lot of things that happened over those years where 
looking back at it, like I definitely would have saved more money and done things a little bit differently. But again, the setting was pretty loose and I didn't have like a lot of like guidelines to follow. Like I didn't get grounded or anything like that. So in that sense, um, you know, my upbringing was very like relaxed, right? Um, it wasn't traditional by any means, but my grandparents are truly the most incredible people on the planet. And so, you know, naturally I wanted to prove, like I wanted to live up to um, the expectation of like, me working hard, right? Being a hard worker and like, you know, my grandparents looking at me and truly uh, being humbled and like being blessed and, and grateful that like I was their their grand their grandkid or almost even like their kid at that point. I almost look at my grandparents like they're my parents, right? And so, um, you know, I went and got a job at 15 years old and uh, I worked at a dry cleaners, right? And it was right down the street from my house and uh, the dry cleaners didn't have air conditioning in Arizona, if you guys don't know, it's really hot. They had a swamp cooler, but like the swamp cooler really couldn't cool the building down because all the equipment was so hot to like dry clean the clothes. So I, you know, obviously didn't like it, right? I didn't like being told what to do and when to do it, when to show up for work, right? And how much money I was worth because I was so used to, you know, creating my own schedule, right? But, you know, having my own hours and, and achieving whatever level of success that I wanted to achieve, you know, through the pool, the pool business, right? What I learned was like the entrepreneurship slash business ownership skills. Um, and now all of a sudden I'm working this like regular job and obviously I didn't like it. And so basically from like 15 to like 17, 18, 19, I just worked a lot of different jobs. Jobs, right all, all in all sorts of different industries um, it wasn't that I ever got fired it was just that I would go into a job and I would essentially master the craft right it was Buffalo Wild Wings or like a pizza shop or whatever the case was and you know basically what would happen is I, I just didn't like it right I didn't like I just I didn't like the vibe there was no room for growth I could see that I was eventually gonna be capped and ultimately I would end up quitting what really changed my paradigm forever, and I encourage you guys to like really pay attention right now, was I got into network marketing when I was like 16 or 17 years old, while I had a job, obviously. Um, when I got into network marketing, that's truly what changed my paradigm for the rest of my life, as Bob Proctor would say. Um, basically, I got into network marketing at 16, and it, I, I was hanging out with guys that were making you know, a lot of money, right? They were making six figures you know, a year. Uh, some of them were even making six figures a month, right? And I saw, it opened up my eyes to how much abundance was actually in the world, right? And that's truly what changed everything. And in that time, I started doing a lot of personal development, right? I was, you know, going to the Tony Robbins events. I was, I was reading like Bob Proctor. I was listening to Les Brown and Eric Thomas and Gary Vaynerchuk before he was even big, right? This was back in like 2013. And that truly changed everything for me. And so, you know, I did, I did pretty well in network marketing. Like in my first company, I got a Mercedes Benz paid for by the company and I built like a pretty large organization. Um, and at the time I thought that that's what I would do forever. So if you're watching this right now and you know, maybe you've had some failures or you made some mistakes along the way or things didn't turn out exactly the way that you thought they would, um, just know that I remember like vividly, you know, sitting there at like 17, 18 years old, having failed multiple times in those different network marketing companies. Obviously like I would achieve success and then I would fail and then I would achieve success and then I would fail and you know I was really down on myself I, I didn't understand why I had kept failing failing right like you know I, I would go up and then I would go down and I would go up and I would go down and I kept hitting rock bottom and I'm just like what the heck and so um, you know it really got to me and I didn't understand why but what did change was my mindset my mindset now was completely different than it had ever been I knew that anything was possible and I learned that through the personal development and the people that I was surrounding myself with so that changed in my life. Um, you know, I went back to the corporate world for about one more year. I got one more final job at Sears Home Services and it was a sales job. It was like I would clean air ducts, right? If you're sitting in your house right now, you look up, you see the air duct in your house. That's what I was doing. I was cleaning those, but then I had the opportunity to upsell um, the homeowner for like, you know, ultraviolet lights or like uh, air filters or something like that. And uh, I made really good money. I actually, uh, my first year at, at Sears Home Services, I made uh, multiple six figures, okay? Um, but I hated it. I, again, I was stuck at like, you know, I had the opportunity to make a lot of money as, as a commission-based, um, you know, sal or commission-based like structure, right? But, um, you know, it, I was capped because I could only work so much. Like there was only so many hours in the day. I was working hard, but I wasn't working smart, right? And so, uh, you know, after about a year at 19 years old, I quit. Right, and uh, just to kind of fast forward really quick because I don't want to make this video too long, and I know you guys are going to get a ton of value out of this. Um, at 19 years old, I started like Googling stuff, right? Like how wh how do I make money online? You know, I was looking at like Amazon FBA, I was looking at YouTube, I looked at Instagram. Like I, I started to see like these influencers and stuff. Um, and, and back then, it was like it wasn't as big as it is now, obviously, right? So uh, Facebook was like a super big platform. 
I actually ended up finding Cody Sperber. Uh, if you guys don't know who Cody Sperber is, he, he's like the clever investor, right? It, you could Google him and you would see him or, or Facebook or YouTube or whatever. And uh, he was talking about how you could like get into real estate with no money down. And I was like, cause I didn't have a lot of money. I mean like I had saved a little bit of money, but I didn't have a lot of money cause I had failed so many times. I was like trying to learn, I was trying to do everything, right? And I didn't, like I never really found that one thing where it was like, oh wow, okay, this is it. Like I can make a lot of money and save a lot of money and invest. And so I had some money saved up, but it wasn't a lot. So I quit my job at Sears at 19 years old. Um, I see this Cody Sperber guy. He keeps following me around Facebook all the time. I'm like, what the heck, right? So like I would, every day I would see this Cody Sperber guy. I'm like, what the heck? So after a month, uh, I finally reached out, right? To, to Clever Investor. And um, ultimately what ended up happening was I paid him uh, or, or Clever Investor uh, a, large, a large chunk of money to, to be my mentor, right? To mentor me. I, I needed a mentor because, you know, I just didn't understand. Like it didn't make sense to me. So, um, you know, well, like basically, what changed there was I, I found a mentor at 19. Um, from there, it took me like nine months, guys, to, to close my first deal. So if you're watching this right now, you're like, man, like, and, and maybe it's not real estate, by the way, maybe it's Shopify or Amazon FBA, or maybe you're trying to trade in the stock market, right? Or uh, whatever niche niche it, it, that you're trying to succeed in, maybe you're flipping cars, whatever it is, right? Maybe it is real estate. Understand that things take time. And I think we live in a, in a world where people expect things to happen overnight because of social media. And we're looking at everybody's highlight reel instead of their real life, right? And we don't know what the real life looks like because nobody will be honest with anybody, right? Nobody wants to talk about that. So, um, you know, ultimately, uh, it took me nine months to close my first deal. Now I'm like 20 years old. And once I closed my first deal though, something happened in my head, right? In my brain. I was like, wow, like this is possible. I was like, holy crap. Like it was real. I, I had this check. I made like $9,000. And I was like, wow, like that was a game changer for the rest of my life, right? And from the time I closed my first deal to the time I closed like 10 or 20 deals was only like another six months. So, you know, what happened is I proved the theory. I proved to myself that I could do it. And that's where everything changed, right? And so I worked really, really, really hard. Um, my work ethic has always been like super high, right? And I, I'm not the smartest kid, right? Like I didn't go to college. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, I remember one point I wanted to be a petroleum engineer, but they wouldn't let me into any college because my GPA wasn't that high. And so, uh, but that was probably the best thing that could have ever happened to me looking back because had I gone the traditional route, you know, yeah, I'm, I might've made like 75 to a hundred thousand dollars a year, which isn't bad money by the way. But to me, like I wanted to achieve a bigger level of success so I could impact the community and the world on a larger scale. Right. And so, um, you know, again, guys, like I wasn't that smart, but I, I worked really hard and, you know, I started closing all these deals with no money down. It, it was called real estate wholesaling. If you're watching this video, you're curious, you, you could go, you could go on YouTube and, and, and look up wholesaling. And, and that's where I started, right? It didn't cost me any money. And, you know, since then I've, I've still failed a lot. And I want you guys to understand that. Like I, since I started wholesaling, you know, I've started multiple other companies. At one point I had an exotic car rental company, um, after I had achieved a decent level of success. And uh, I had a golf cart limousine company here in Arizona in, in Scottsdale. Right. And, um, um, you know, I've had multiple other companies and now, you know, I have a marketing company. I do wholesaling. I'm a traditional real estate agent. Um, I played around in the stock market. I've played around in cryptocurrency. I've had an ATM company or still have an ATM company and I've had those other companies. But what I want you guys to take away from this right now is that I would say at, at between 19 and 23. So the last four and a half years, almost five years, um, you know, I've started maybe like 12 companies, 10, let's, let's say 10 companies. And out of those 10 companies, like six of them have failed. So I have four companies right now. Uh, six of those companies have failed. And out of the four, two or three of them bring in the majority of the money. So I, I still encounter failure on a daily basis, right? I encounter failure every single day. And that's, that's very normal, right? And people always look at failure as a bad thing. And the reality of it is, failure is the best thing that could ever happen to you. And, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And look, and it never occurs to you that, that, that failure is a good thing until you look at it in retrospect, right? You look at, you look backwards on your life and you're like, oh man, like that failure, that thing that, you know, I, I was so like discouraged about or, or, or unhappy about, or like, you know, so depressed or, or stressed out about, typically like in retrospect w is the best thing that ever happens to, or happened to me. And um, I think it'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. So that, that's pretty much it guys. I want you to take away from this video. You know, obviously now I'm 23 years old, I'm super blessed, right? I'm super grateful um, to, to be where I'm at. You know, I've, I was able to buy a Lamborghini. I'll show you guys that on the screen. I was able to buy an Audi R8. You know, you can check that out on the screen. Uh, I have a Range Rover now, you know, and it's not about the materialistic things for me, um, but you know, for me, you know, I was able to go to like Nicaragua, right? And, and I was, I've actually been in Nicaragua two times now in the last um, tw uh, 24 months. And I was able to build houses for the less fortunate. Okay, I'll actually show you guys that on the screen right now.
now too, um, of me like digging trenches and stuff for the less fortunate. And that's all been self-funded by myself. So I, I paid for the house to be built and I built the house myself uh, with my own uh, money and materials. So, um, you know, th those are some of the things that I've been able to do with the money, right? I I've been able to uh, hire people and have people work for me full time and provide for other people and their families, right? And so, um, you know, Again, guys, it's okay to chase the materialistic things because once you have this, you're able to do a lot more with the money, right? The materialistic things in no way, shape or form have made me happy, um, but a lot of the other things have, okay? Uh, materialistic things is short-term happiness and the other things, uh, fulfillment is more long-term happiness, right? And so, um, guys, that, that's pretty much it, right? If you're watching this video, understand that uh, success takes time. Uh, whatever it is that you, you're trying to pursue right now, doesn't matter what niche or what industry, understand that uh, you, the only thing that you have to do is you have to you know, find somebody that has what you want and you have to mirror them, right? You have to do exactly what they do. And if you do exactly what they do, eventually you'll get exactly what they have, right? And so, um, you know, basically hang out with good people and do find, find people that you look up to that have what you want and do what they do. Talk the way they talk, dress the way they dress. And it's only a matter of time before you have exactly what it is that they have, right? Uh, the success is very simple. Uh, success isn't complicated. As a matter of fact, I think the reason that most people are unsuccessful is because they believe that it's complicated, right? They believe that there's this magical formula. And in reality, uh, the only two things that matter are time and, and your work ethic, right? How long, and how hard have you worked and eventually you will become successful every single time it, it's that simple uh, guys i hope you enjoyed this video uh, please smash that thumbs up button uh, if you enjoyed this style of video uh, drop in the comment section down below uh, what you'd like to see in a future video and uh, if, if there's anything that i left out of my story that you would like to know um you'd be happy to make another video right a follow-up video and as always guys uh, go out there achieve all of your goals and your dreams beyond your wildest imagination and i look forward to seeing you in the next video